So let's imagine the situation. Car pulls up in front of you, bag on your head, dumped in the boot of a car. What are you going to do? Besides urinate yourself and the bowel evacuation. Once that's obviously, once that's all taken care of, what are you going to do? What are you, what are you going to pay attention to? What are you going to look out for? What can you look out for when there's a bag on your head? How are you going to find out where you are in order to signal for help? Now it might sound like a, a, a ridiculous logic puzzle of sorts to try and solve, but it is. It's something that I've tried a few times to do, taking inspiration from, uh, uh, from Sherlock Holmes. As to where I am, I was admittedly lost for a moment between Charing Cross and Holborn, but I was saved by the bread shop on Saffron Hill. It's the film, uh, Taken Two, with uh, uh, everyone's favourite daddy, Liam Neeson. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right turn. This way round to try and see how we can use our minds and our memories to backtrack, to trace locations, to figure out where we are, to follow destinations when all we have to deal with is the pressure of turning left and right and speeds and timing and the awareness of precisely where we are at any given time even though we can't see. So it should be considered two parts. I'm not going to do two parts because the <laughs> The, uh, you know that we would need to go into neuroscience and, uh, and exposure to different threats and suffice it to say very big nutshell that if you can get control of your emotions enough to focus on what's going on you need to develop these techniques well you don't need to I don't know how many people uh, are, are going to be involved in kidnapping scenarios but this is something that you can use in order to try and figure out precisely where you are first step how well do you know your area how well do you know your location? Even where you live at the minute, do you know what's down the street? Do you know which store is three blocks up and over to the left, if there is one? Do you know the name of the streets? Do you know the speed zones? Do you know where the schools are, the speed bumps? Uh, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm going through uh, England and American territories here as well, but these are the types of things that we take for granted. How aware currently of you, how aware currently are, how aware, I need the Sean Spencer line. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> How aware of your current location are you? Ask yourself that honestly. How much detail can you go into? If you walked or drove or got the bus or rode home today, what did you notice? All of the cars that passed you by, all of the shops, the turnings, the weather, the people walking, who was walking, what were they wearing, how fast you were going the music that was on the radio, the content that the radio presenters were talking about, was it all there? Uh, the, the first step that you can use is to simply tune in your engagement. Tune in your active engagement to the things that are going on around you. Why don't you make notes when you're watching a movie? The majority of us, why don't we make notes when you're watching a movie? And yet you can come away with two hours of information character plots who said what who was wearing what what led to what and this explosion this location right we've got all of that information there and that's two hours worth of information just pay attention and we actively engage ourselves in this information therefore we make it mean something more than purely data purely content that's job one the next job is to develop a language that you can use, a mnemonic language that you can use, right? So if you think through all of the, all of the types of things that you are likely to encounter, directions, up, down, left, right, a speed bump, a, 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 a sharp turn, you know, add a degree of sharp uh, about it, S uh, sounds that are going on around you, uh, uh, traffic lights would be another one as well. This is a, a base language of being driven around, whether it be in the back of a handsome cab, or in the or, or in the boot of a, a, a car or a van. These are the, the these are the base elements that you will have throughout pretty much all of the roads that you encounter. Okay, so here's the ones that I use, the ones that stick out for me. I I do uh, uh, up, down, left, right speed bump and traffic lights those are the ones that i have a conversion for 
everything else I add in on the fly. I convert on the fly. So if it is that um, in the film Liam Neeson hears a dog barking, I'll just add in a dog bark, add in a dog, add in that immediate mnemonic switch right there. So here are the ones that I use. You feel free to make up your own, but you're looking for uh, basically the word substitution principle in effect here. What does the word itself remind you of? Up always reminds me of the film Up. So my image for up, as in a direction that means up for me, or if you're following uh, directions when you're out hiking, or directions on a map, directions on a sat-nav, up invariably means straight on as well. So you're going straight for a bit. So I use Mr. Fredrickson, the grumpy yet lovable old man with uh, tennis balls on his cane. One missing, obviously, because Doug had that. Um, for down, I use the down and outs from Bugsy Malone. Uh, it may be a play or a film that some of you are familiar with. If you're not, uh, then you can add in any immediate conversion there. I was in Bugsy Malone in high school many years ago, and I played one of the down and outs. So that was the first thing I heard in my head when uh, when I was thinking of a conversion for down. I used that song, down, 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 down and out. That way around. Uh, left, I use uh, uh, Corey Taylor from Slipknot, uh, as they have a very popular song, Left Behind. And uh, right, I use uh, Donald Trump, because he's basically a caricature that is associated with being on the right. Um, so those are the ones I use for that. In terms of speed bumps, I have a literal sleeping policeman. Uh, in my head that I use as I don't know if that is uh, a, an analogy that travels well outside of England but that is what they were known as when uh, when I was a child um, a sleeping policeman uh, it may be uh, maybe a colloquial thing to the Midlands but there we are that's that's what I uh, that's what I knew that as traffic lights will always be uh, an ice lolly there were these ice lollies that you would get uh, on sticks that were multi-colours uh, as you would go down. So whenever I think of traffic lights, I think of ice lollies. Then what I have to do is to create a journey. Now what I would need to do is to make sure that the journey that I use is a pretty big one. Because in reality, if you are stuffed into the back of a handsome cab or the boot of a car, you don't know how long you're going to be driving for. And let's face it, if you are tense, you are overexcited, uh, not in a happy way, but in a, in, a, in a nervous system kind of way, the relativity of time will be played with that way around. So you need to make sure that your journey is predictably big enough that it can support a, a decent amount of data. And then all you're doing is you're following through the sensations. You would need to calm your body, calm your mind, not in a spiritual, ethereal kind of sense, but to the point where you're not listening to the sound of your own heartbeat because of the adrenaline rushing inside of you, but so much so that you can hear the, sh the gear shift from, uh, from inside the boot, or you can be aware of things going on nearby the window because you're paying attention. As I say, I, I've tried this a, a, a few times now, uh, all, all the way back in The Deductionist uh, uh, Season 1, Episode 1, I believe it was. Uh, I got into the boot of many cars. Um, I, I can't remember how many takes we did, but we did a few. Um, I take my phone, take my watch, take my wallet, take everything, check my pockets, all of this kind of thing. Give me a GoPro, so I'll still be able to talk to people uh, uh, from the back and... Uh, we can use it for, for footage that way around and drive wherever you want. The only thing that is different be, uh, different between them two circumstances is I would be relatively calm. Uh, other than being quite uncomfortable because I'm quite a big person, uh, I, I, uh, it would be a struggle to fit into the boot of most of the cars, um, m most of the cars that I had to be driven around in. Um, so that was the only thing I had to contend with. Other than that, you can feel the pressure either side of where you turn left and right. So you can make a mental note of which side your head is as you get in. Is it on the right hand side or is it on the left hand side? If, you, if, the, uh, if your head is on the right hand side, then whenever you feel extra pressure towards the right, it's because the car is turning left. The final part is treating that like a speed number round. 
uh, not not a speed number round, sorry, it is is treating it like a spoken number round from a memory competition. Somebody invariably would press a recording and you'd hear six, nine, seven, two, four, one, zero, one, and so on and so forth until maybe a 500 digit number is read out and you have to recall it in order. So uh, uh, what we would look to do from there is add in our counting of time. These don't have to be real seconds, so long as you're aware of your emotional state. I'm not expecting anyone to uh, put the time and effort in to uh, be that aware of the passing by of individual seconds. Whenever it is that you need to uh, figure out where you are, you can plot through these details in terms of, okay, do you know the area? Very well, if you're following the Sherlockian route. So you can work through the maps and where the speed zones change, following following along uh, the possibility for a first exit, a second exit, the knowledge of how fast the car is going based on the gears changing, counting along and following it, following it along that way around in order to figure out precisely where you are. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is we are going to put that into practice so you guys can... Uh, follow along and test this out uh, uh, if it is you want to come back to this video at a later stage after you've decided what uh, what conversion language you get you're going to use do so um, uh, <laughs> it, it certainly won't hurt my uh, hurt my view count um, but if it is that you are happy enough to use the language that I do then let's do this so here's what it is right this is a, a, a blurred video that I took with my camera went out in somewhere uh, I didn't take the video blurred, I have blurred this to try and simulate some kind of annoyance, however minimal, at being able to force, to, uh, at being able to uh, pay attention to things that you are trying to see, to try and push you towards the nature of cognitive dissonance, to see if you can still focus on the necessary memory technique that still needs to go in here. So, when we're looking at uh, uh, this, I'm going to tap along. You kind of count in metronomic quality. All you would need to be doing is to add in the details. And I'll give you the verbal cues because we are doing this. This is a video, right? So there's only so much of a real life element we can put towards this. Um, I, I did it with, um, with Ian uh, in the last episode of The Deductionist. Uh, I took him through all this methodology. Uh, but live, I could put the bag on his head and I could really uh, try and annoy him properly as much as possible. This way round... I don't really have a lot of things to play with, so I blurred it, and I'll give you I'll give you the timing this way around in terms of the metronomic quality that you keep track of, and I will let out uh, prompt words that you can use, kind of talk through the circumstances and the surroundings uh, uh, that are there that you may or may not be able to see. If it's a good blindfold, good bag on your head, you might get a nose peek. Uh, or, or if you're being uh, stuffed into the boot of a car, uh, uh, then you might be able to peek through um, the, the back end of the, the, uh, the boot lock if you can undo it that way around. But this video is from a walking perspective anyway, but it's just to illustrate the point in terms of, uh, in terms of locating yourself when your senses are um, muted this way around <laughs> okay so don't forget um we've got uh mr frederickson is your up or straight on we've got uh, uh down as the down and outs we have Corey taylor in left the right is donald trump obviously <laughs> and then we've got our sleeping policeman as speed bumps um, finishing with the traffic lights being uh, being an ice lolly, an iced lolly, an ice lolly. Hmm. I've heard it both ways. Uh, and so here it is, right? So I'll get this going this way round, and I'll count it through. Maybe not that fast, but I'll count it through. Okay. Here we go. Pay attention. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Left at lights. One, two, going up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, metal business, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, vegan graffiti, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, finishing with a right turning, okay? revivify let it be there let it live go over the journey there was a lot of pressure and that, that adds that even even just doing this it adds to the the uh, the implication of pressure for you guys to focus on the kinds of information that's there so let it sit for a second and then let's imagine you have um you have broken free you are no longer a prisoner let's follow it through actually as we can see it right so here's the unblurred version what's up first what is up first we had we had a direction and uh, and a count in, in terms of how long we were going for so i would need to think okay i'm going uh, mr frederickson was up first so i'm going up for an eight count <laughs> Two, three, four, <laughs> running five, five, six, seven, eight. What was after eight? We go right, right, because there was Donald Trump. We go right for 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's after this? What do we do? Left at lights. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Right, uh, sorry, uh, and we were, we were going on there, right? So here's the 18. So what's from here? Let's go right the way through to the end. We had, uh, we had Mr. Fredrickson again, so we're going up 17. There was uh, the metal business, and then it keeps going until uh, uh, 23 was the vegan graffiti, and then 37 was the right turning. So let's let's see how we get that way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now here's the thing. If for some reason I'd gotten confused and I didn't remember exactly where to go, that I was going straight on for uh, up essentially for 37 with adding on of the uh, of the different sights and sounds and things that I'd been aware of on the way. If for some reason I got confused and I wasn't going up and actually took that left turning. If I didn't hit the metal business on 17 or the vegan graffiti on 23, I'd know I'd gone off, right? So we can keep going. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's the metal business. Uh, 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 that was just a quick association that you can make. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. There's the vegan graffiti. 24, 25, 26, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and 37. You can see, you might not be able to see it, but just a little bit further up by the by the uh, the speed the speed sign that's sticking up there, there is a right turning uh, that uh, that that you can take. And there you have it. Uh, a, a slightly quirky affair nonetheless, how to memorize a kidnapping, but these are things that you can seek to put into use should a similar situation ever arise. I hope to God it doesn't for you. <laughs> um, but this is something that was born out of uh, uh, the obsessive nerd that lives inside me. <laughs> May he live long and prosper. 
for many years to come. Um, so yeah, if you got anything out of that, guys, remember to uh, drop a like, drop a comment, click on the subscription bell, uh, and and if you didn't, then I'd probably ask yourself why you continued on watching the whole video in the first place. Who knows? Um, so yeah, we're getting back to getting back to normal. Uh, uh, let me know your thoughts, how you get on, how you were able to follow along with the information down below, and uh, I'll see you for a podcast very soon.